good bitter cold morning January 2022 20, 20, 20, 2022 and bitterly cold start to the day minus 33 officially but I'm thinking in the bog here we might hit close to minus 40 and we got darn close but the coldest spot in the lower 48 this morning minus 41 Salina Minnesota which is only an hour north of the bog and interestingly on the day I'm going to release this video February 3rd it's also gonna dip down well below 30 below zero can birds really survive in this we're gonna find out today. And first I need to defrost my windows. High temperature yesterday was well below zero. We had some new signs made. So now no excuse to find the welcome center. I'm calling this the bitterly cold, dang it's cold, my feet are frozen, my fingers, I can't feel my fingers, and my beard is frosty, my eyes are running, my glasses are fogging up, my heater isn't keeping the, the wind, windows clear on my van episode. <laughs> How do birds survive in this? How do these birds survive? How do these birds survive? And not just survive, but thrive. Boreal birds are tough, and we're gonna learn how they do it in this episode. I hope I can survive. I only got my light gloves because I want to take photos, but see, they got these cool things. But when I do this to run my camera, fingers freeze in eh, less than a minute. I guess. And I really frost nipped them the other day at my place, photographing red poles at dawn at 10 below zero. I've done it so many times now that they're so susceptible but as you know, if you've done it, you just start crying when they're warming up, which seems counterintuitive, but that's the, when they really hurt, when they're thawing out. Yeah, I somehow don't think the fire danger is medium today. It's really cool here on Nichols Lake Road and you can hear the trees popping at these temperatures, 30 to 40 below zero Fahrenheit. I'm under the impression it's the sap in the tree that is just uh, super freezing and popping the cells. Hear it? Some of them can almost be like shotgun. <laughs> okay, not quite that dramatic, but pretty cool. That pine grosbeak's flying over. Pine gross beaks. Looks like they're feeding on tamarack cones. Interesting. And when pine gross beaks are thirsty, they just peck at the snow and eat snow. Like this beautiful male. You're a raven trying to <laughs> get them to come in. Ravens are masters of survival. I've already seen several road hunting, road hunting. They'll fly down the roads and looking for any kind of road kill. So ravens can use their intelligence and ingenuity to survive in these brutal temps. But they are so spooky, they just split the minute I stopped. And uh, oh, white wing crossbills down the road. Let's try and get those crossbills. <laughs> I haven't had much luck getting them to land for me today. I've, I pitched in a flock on Nichols Lake Road, but further down, but they just flew over my head and kept going. The white winged crossbill is one of those species that just thrives in the boreal north. They subsist on nothing but the seeds of black spruce and tamarack cones. Their cousins, the red crossbill, specialize in larger pine cones. 
But these guys are so good. We call them the parrots of the north because they can do this hanging upside down, right side up. They'll nip a cone off, in this case a black spruce, and then take that crossed bill, which looks like a deformity, but is actually an asset, wedge it between the scales, pry the cone scales apart, and pluck out a seed with their scoop-like tongue. And they know within a millisecond if it's a good seed. Then in quick succession, they husk that seed, eat it, and drop the husk. If you're standing below a tree where crossbills are feeding, it's almost like it's raining. One researcher discovered that they need to eat between 2,600 and 3,160 seeds in a day to keep up with their energy demands. Pretty cool. And they are such masters of winter that they can nest any month of the year, including the dead of winter. When their crossbill brains tell them that there's enough food in this area, they will start courtship and mating. They'll be on eggs in the dead of winter and raise young. I don't know the answer to that. Red poles, I'm gonna try and fish some more in. Psh, 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 psh. My lips don't wanna work at these temps. You might be wondering what the heck these red poles are doing on the road. Well, oftentimes they're picking salt off the road. Salt that comes from plow trucks and the bottom of your car. And that is a mineral that they crave. So when you're out and about in the bog, please watch out for these flocks and slow down, let them fly off the road. But red poles aren't the only ones craving salt. Also pine grosbeaks and white wing crossbills. Here's a flashback to early December. Uh, it's a bummer, just picked up this uh white wing crossbill hit by a car on 133 always sad but maybe we can get it mounted yeah maybe it can go to good use Clinton can turn it into a study skin as well so it'll be put to good use and back to the present <laughs> I just found a sharp-tailed grouse under the feeders, not on the east side of 229, but on the west side of 229. And pretty cool, because they are declining in the bog. But what do these guys do on those bitter, crazy cold nights? Well, they take a little trick out of the rough grouse playbook. It's called snow roosting. At dusk, they'll burrow down in the snow, foot and a half down, where it's 25 to 50 degrees warmer than the air temperature. And they sleep nice and snug and cozy. You're also safe from predators. And then in the morning, you just pop out and go about your business. By the way, if you want to get a little deeper look at uh, sharp-tailed grouse and white wing crossbills, check out Clinton's Critters episodes on this YouTube channel. There's another problem with photographing and trying to shoot video in the at 20, 30 below zero. Glasses fog up constantly. Can't see a thing. Camera refused to focus. Ah, joy, joy, joy. St. Louis River. Now a snowmobile trail. Board member Ruben made us this really cool free little library. My good craftsmanship. And it's stocked. And, ooh. One on moths and how to rear them. Oh, this is a good book, Nature in Winter, by the Stokes, Donald and Lillian. Illustrations, but tons of good info in there. Season with eagles, that's cool. Maybe you or your kids are into eagles. Yeah, come on by. Wesley the Owl, never heard of it. The remarkable love story of an owl and his girl. Cute. An ancient one called Bird Neighbors. Wow, that is something else from the year 1900. What other free library, little free library, are you going to find something like that in? Or a book in Russian? I mean, oh, red-breasted geese, though. 
high on my list to see, but I'm not heading to Russia anytime soon. Birds of the Tropics. Audubon's biography. It's a good one. I've read it. He was an interesting, complicated, but uh, genius of a guy. All right, so that's just a few. Ooh, that little first guide for kids. That's a good one. So come on by and you can drop your own bird and nature books. We want to keep it to bird and nature books. Um, please. It's a lot like Yellowstone. When you see cars pulled over, there's something happening and you can see on the power pole here, there's a, I don't know if you can see it, there's a great gray owl on seven south of the greenhouse. Let's go get some video. Temperatures in the minus 30s is nothing for a great gray owl. They have an extremely thick layer of feathers over their entire body. You know, they are the largest, tallest owl in North America, but only the third heaviest. Much of their bulk is made up by these warm, insulating feathers. Even deep snow is no detriment. Like this hunting great gray, they can hear a vole scurrying around under two feet of snow from 100 yards away. And this guy jumped off the perch multiple times. And what they're doing is they're hovering, listening. See those big facial discs? They're focusing the sound on their ear holes, which are on the front of their face. Slightly different positions, slightly different size and shape. And they're triangulating that sound pinpointing where that vole is under the snow. And voles make up almost 100% of their diet in winter. So they need to be masters of the hunt. And on the fourth try, this great gray plunged into the snow and pulled up a vole. And Sparky messed it up. I got the video, but I must have deleted the file before I got home. Um, yeah, I was a bit bummed. Uh, you know, it's cold when your feet are getting cold, even while you're driving around with the heater blasted. <laughs> uh. Canada Jay, the bird formerly known as Grey Jay, is a phenomenal survivor and thriver of winter. Starting in late fall, they They'll eat anything. They'll jump in your fry pan, steal your bacon. And what are they doing with all that food? Well, they take it and mix it with their ample glutinous saliva and make these little sticky pellets of food they stash all over in the woods. And that enables them to have a steady source of food, which they need because they nest in very early spring. That's the boreal chickadee, real nasally. chick schnee schnee Like a black-capped chickadee with a cold. And here it's coming down to the feeders. They won't hardly touch a sunflower seed, but they love suet and fat. I always joke that they, if enough of them got together, they'd bring down a moose because they are hardcore meat eaters. Boreal chickadees and black cap chickadees are the mighty mites of the northern forests. When they're out there foraging, they need to maintain a body temperature of 108 degrees. And they find something like a deer carcass or a rib cage or suet or peanut butter that we put out for them, it's a bonus because at eight degrees below zero, they normally have to spend 20 times longer eating compared to a spring day. Auggie's bog walk. Common red poles winter farther north than almost any songbird in North America. And they have a cool little trick up their sleeve or down their throat, I guess. They have this little pouch off their esophagus called a diverticulum. And right at dusk, they can just pack it with seeds, uh, birch seeds, alder seeds. 
and then they go find a nice little roost deep in a spruce tree and then all night long they kind of regurgitate those seeds up into their throat, swallow them, and that keeps their metabolism going and it keeps their internal body temperature nice and warm for those bitterly cold nights like last night. I hope you enjoyed this little peek into the birds' lives at minus 38 degrees Fahrenheit. They are not only survivors, they are thrivers. Is that a word? Well, thanks for joining me on this darn cold finger numbing morning but yeah superstar bird of the day definitely the great gray owl on seven who performed for us didn't even look at the people on the road couldn't care less caught a vole for us yeah pretty cool so until next time keep your feet in your sorrels maybe with some heat warmers some of those packets and keep your head in a hat a good hat yeah because it's cold out here all right take care all right bye bye happy 2022